Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Chris Mansier of Bayer. He is the Agronomic Solutions Manager and we're going to be talking about cereal broadleaf market for this episode of Wheat School. So welcome Chris, it's great to see you. Great to see you too. Okay, so let's just go down to the basics of cereal broadleaf market. What are growers looking at coming into this year? So as you kind of make your decisions for what you're going to use in crop for your cereals this year. Um, there's a few things that you gotta look at. So you gotta look back into your records. What have you been using in the past? Uh, what's affordable for you? What are the different pests that you're trying to manage? So um, depending on your farm, um, different options would be better for you. Um, one messaging that I, I really wanna kinda get out there is um, just rotation itself. So uh, for the last 20 years, a lot of the broadleaf market in, in Western Canada has been in mainly group twos and group fours uh, with a little bit of group sixes in there. But uh, just with over time, uh, resistance has crept in and especially for certain certain uh, broadleafs, especially kochia and, and of course, you know, different pressure over time, you know, that resistance does spread. So it's, it's important to rotate those groups and, and look at your options that you have out there. Right. How widespread currently is resistance and what are some options if growers are seeing that they have some really strong resistance to the chemicals they've been spraying? So uh, resistance, um, <laughs> people think that it's not something that affects them, but I think in the last weed survey there was 70% of fields that have a, a resistant weed in there. So depending, it could be a grassy weed or a broadleaf weed, but it's something that everyone deals with and, and it's very normal, especially with kochia, like I said, um, it's a weed that is kind of present burn-off timing in crop so and and we want to learn the lesson from that um, We want to make sure keep as many tools in the tool belt as long as we can so just having that herbicide rotation so um, like I said twos and fours have been a, a real base for a lot of different uh, Herbicides that have been used for a lot of years um, So what I would encourage, you know, there's a lot of good options out there that include some HPPDs. So that's a, a a uh, herbicide that uh, that's a group 27 and it's usually paired with a group 6 um, and they're a synergistic in action so um, 1 plus 1 equals 5 it's not just an additive effect um, and so it's a really good option uh, to add into your rotation to kind of prolong the resistance that can that it can come. So when speaking about group 6 and 27s what are some of the options that growers might be looking at for different modes of action? Um, so um, there's a few options now there in the cereal broadleaf market. Um, some have been out there for quite a while. So uh, look at the at the labels and each one, and they might uh, fit your situation better. Some have different recropping potentials. Some are, are equal. Um, some have grass activity. Some don't, and that has different implications. Some can be a little bit antagonistic to your cereal germinicide. So that's something to watch out for, and have a little bit more additional phyto concerns. Uh, so. Um, look at the the labels that are out there, look at the recropping options, and just uh, when you're making your choice, just make sure you're making an informed choice. Right, and when you speak of rotation, is it a yearly rotation or every time you spray? What what would we well, be looking at for that? Uh, rotation and, and just weed management in general, it's something that's a long-term view. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on the weed, you know, you gotta look at the history of what I've used in the past and and there's some modes of actions that maybe you want to save uh, for certain other crops that have limited modes of action that can be used in there. So if you have an option to use something else uh, um, to extend, you know, if you're reliant on one mode of action in that crop and you can use something else in a different crop, that's a really good way, you know, because you, you can't just think of one year, right? And then it's also, uh, we're talking specifically about broadleaf in crop control, but, you know, pre-seed, um, and even after harvest is a good way of, you know, timing of the application can really help also. Right, so you definitely want to spread that out. Where can growers go if they want more information on what a long-term plan should look like? Um, so there's a lot of information out there. Um, so if you 
you know, simply Google herbicide resistant Western Canada. Um, there's a lot of weed surveys out there and you can kind of see what the trends have been. There's a lot of local agronomists that are really well versed. There's a lot of people and even growers themselves are really well educated. Um, and that, that's, that's one thing I would encourage growers to do. Look what's going into your crop plan. So everything comes into consideration to cost, uh, but it is a long-term uh, view. So look what you're using look what the possible strengths are so if you have certain problems with certain weeds maybe you have uh, an option that would fit well and either you know in for cost and and your programming but you know might be stronger on the weed that you're facing that have problems with so you know do your homework and and if you're not sure there's lots of your sales rep or or your agronomist at your retail are really good sources of info that's terrific. And any words of encouragement for growers as we will hopefully start seeding in the near future? Yeah, for sure. Um, just um, the one thing I've kind of noticed that, you know, we've kind of been reactive in some cases for herbicides and, and resistant problems. So if you can be proactive, throw in those different modes of action that you haven't used in the past, um, it goes a long way to preserve what you already have. And you can use those actives for a lot longer than and then really extend that out, which is, you know, that's something to be really noted because new modes of action don't come along every day. Right, for sure. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. And that was Chris Mounsier on Real Agriculture.